What's up, everybody? I'm Finn McKenty. This is my second channel where I talk about business and marketing and personal development, all that kind of stuff that's not a fit for my main channel. What I wanted to talk about today was why I changed my mind about doing videos about Dance Cabin Dance and Pantera, Rage Against the Machine, some of these other bands where I said I was never going to make a video about them, either because like I didn't like their fan base or I wasn't interested in it or whatever, there's a few different reasons why I said I would never do these videos, and yet I did. So I wanted to share my thought process there because I think there's some larger takeaways that are relevant for creators in particular, but really anybody, because the root of all this, I think, lies in ego and self-centeredness and being unwilling to change. So I will walk you through all of that in this video. Before I do that, as usual, I wanna plug my social media coaching program. There's a link to that in the description. It's a fit for really two kinds of people, I think, number one is a creator of any kind like if you're a youtuber if you want to start an instagram page something like that you want to grow that and eventually monetize it in some way and number two if you are an individual that owns a company or a brand or something like that and you want to grow your own personal brand as a way of growing the company for example i've been working with a friend of mine who runs an executive coaching firm and we've been growing his presence as a way of helping his coaching company grow so if you are either of those things, then check it out at the link below if you're interested. So why did I change my mind about Dance Cabin Dance? And am I going to change my mind about Deftones and Faith No More and a lot of the other bands that I said I would never make videos about? So the reason why I originally didn't want to make that Dance Cabin Dance video and why I'm still kind of on the fence about the other ones is just because they're not creatively exciting to me because I don't really like any of those bands that much. And at least right now, there's no kind of big insight about them that I want to communicate because what really excites me is if I feel like I came up with some sort of an idea of like understanding why something is popular or something people don't understand about it or underappreciate and I get excited about communicating that. I don't have that with those bands. And maybe I'll find it. If I do, I'll make a video about them. But really what it comes down to is ego. Where my head was at, I think, like I didn't consciously say this, but I think this is kind of where I was at. I was mad because I felt like people should like the content that I want to make. Just the same as when bands like put out their third album that's totally different from the first two and nobody likes it and they get mad like, what the fuck? Like, I know we're a thrash band, but you should like our experimental psychedelic dubstep album because if you're a real fan, you would appreciate anything we do. It makes me cringe so hard when I see bands doing that and kind of feel like I was doing a little bit of that. I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to feel like I had to inform people because really like my biggest passion, it's not music trivia. Like I don't really care that much about telling the history of this band and how many drummers they had. And what I'm interested in is looking at the underlying themes below these things of like, why did this band become popular? What did they do well or not do well? And what are the larger lessons that can be learned from that? Because I would hope that from watching these videos, people can take away something from it that has nothing to do with music that might help them in their you know career or school or personal life. Maybe it sounds corny, but really I wanna help people. Like that's why I do all of this. But if you look at my videos, you'll see that basically the more like helpful and informative something is, the less views it gets. And for a while that was making me really angry because that's the stuff that I enjoy making the most and I was mad that the audience didn't like it as much as I did. Which is exactly the same as when a band puts out their weird third album of psychedelic dubstep and nobody likes it and they get butt hurt. And so even though my channel was more successful than ever, like I had just hit 200,000 subscribers, it was still growing, like everything was growing great, but, but I was kind of frustrated and a little bit unhappy despite all of that. And that felt bad. Like it felt like there was something wrong. And what I realized is that it was ego and entitlement on my part. Like the audience is not obligated to like anything. So I just kind of took that pressure off myself of like feeling like I had to inform people and give them some sort of useful information. I just said, you know what? I'm here to entertain people. If people enjoy watching my videos, that makes me happy. So I made the Dance Gavin Dance video. I made the Pantera video. And I want to be clear, it's not like I was pandering or selling out or making content that I didn't enjoy just for the sake of views, because it wasn't that at all. I actually really enjoyed making both of those videos. So the lesson to me is like, don't let your ego get in the way of being happy. No situation is ever going to be perfect, especially as a creator, but it's the same as everywhere in life. Like you may have the idea that there's some perfect job out there where everything's gonna be great and you're gonna love every day at work, that's not true. I'm not saying like you should settle for less and just put up with things you don't like that make you unhappy. You should definitely push yourself. You should always try to make the most out of any situation, but don't let that get in the way of being grateful for what you do have. 
because that's what I was doing. I was like, yeah, I've got 200,000 subscribers and yeah, there's a million people a month that come to watch my videos and they care about my opinions on music, but I'm kind of butthurt about that because I really wish that they would come to me for useful information that would help them in their life or career. As soon as I realized that I was kind of falling into that pattern of thinking, I was instantly like, okay, this is dumb. Any job that you have, there's always gonna be something about it that you don't like. And if you focus on that, you can make yourself really miserable no matter how good the rest of the situation is. I've done that before many times. And in hindsight, I realized that I just fucked up what was actually a pretty good situation. And I've seen other people do the same. I'll give you an example of that. There was a guy when I worked at this product design agency, there's kind of two parts of that process of designing a product. Like let's say you're designing headphones. There's one part that's the more creative side, which is like sketching out the way that the headphones are gonna look and the way they'll fold and kind of the fun part of designing how the thing works and looks. And then there's the other part of this of actually like building this in, in the 3D modeling program, which is then what you will hand off to the factory and the engineers to actually like produce the thing. There was a guy on my team who was super good at the technical part. He was great at 3D modeling. He was really fast at it, did great work and everyone really respected him for that. But he was always kind of grumbling about the fact that he really wanted to do the other part, like the creative like design part. And we were like, dude, Tony, like you're great at this. Like you are the best person in the company at the 3D stuff. Like why don't you just like own that and be great at it? Like everybody he loves you for that. But for whatever reason, he just couldn't see things that way for a long time. And so he ended up making himself miserable until finally he had the same kind of realization that I did, which is like, you know what? I'm just going to embrace that. I'm going to be grateful for the fact that I have this thing that people value. And I'm going to be happy about that instead of making myself miserable by always thinking that the grass is greener somewhere else. And by the way, the people that have that like creative job, they get mad because, you know, there's someone else higher up the chain that gets to decide what the product concept is. And they're like, well, yeah, I get to, you know, design it, but I don't get to decide the concept. I wish I had that job. And I'm sure the people who decide the concept, you know, they have the same thing. The larger point is don't let yourself go down that path of finding fault in something good and making yourself miserable rather than being grateful for all the positive things about that situation. And again, just to be clear, that doesn't mean settling for less. That doesn't mean coasting. That doesn't mean letting yourself stagnate anywhere. Like you can still be pushing for the next thing and you should be. Just don't make yourself miserable by letting yourself go down that path of negativity. Kind of counterintuitive, but I think by being grateful and embracing what you have now, that is actually how you excel and find the next thing. So like for me, as soon as I took that constraint off myself and just said, you know what, I'm gonna entertain people. Let's just have fun with this. That is when I hit the next inflection point of growth for my channel. Like I think it was uh, April or so, March or April, and I did that Pantera video. And then May and June were like my biggest months ever. And that felt great. So that's kind of how I'm looking at things going forward. My job is just to give people what they want, to entertain people. And what I've found actually is that people are taking away more information than I realize. Like you don't have to beat people over the head with it. And in fact, by making it entertaining, that's what's gonna make people pay more attention and absorb the useful stuff that is in there. Just like at school, the teachers that were the most entertaining and high energy, those are the ones you paid more attention in, right? And so maybe they didn't like pack in as much information into their course as someone else did. But because they were entertaining, you paid more attention and therefore actually absorbed more net information than in the other like boring dry class. Maybe I can be the fun, entertaining teacher that puts memes in their lectures. I don't know. But I'm not going to let myself go down that rabbit hole of like finding fault in something. Because you know what? If you try hard enough, you can find fault in absolutely anything. It's very easy to make yourself feel miserable by saying, yeah, but... Like if you find yourself saying, yeah, but that's a good sign that you are practicing negative thinking and maybe it's time to just press reset and step back and think about what you should be grateful for. So I hope that was helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments. Have you ever poisoned something for yourself by finding fault in it instead of focusing on what you're grateful for? And then in hindsight, realize like, oh, actually that thing that I was complaining about was actually pretty cool. Maybe I shouldn't have been so critical of it. Or is that just me? Am I just that asshole? I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you again to everyone who supported the channel and I will see you next time.